The New York Times is reporting that five major studios are bidding for the rights to James Bond. The series has been based at Sony Pictures Entertainment since 2006's Casino Royale, where the 007 franchise has made over $3.5 billion in box office receipts. With the release of 2015 Spectre, the rights then lapsed, with rights holders MGM and Eon Productions now shopping the property to interested buyers that include Warner Brothers, Universal Pictures, 20th Century Fox, and Annapurna, with Sony also making their case to keep the series. Casting for the franchise has not been discussed as of this moment, but sources for the time say producers hope Daniel Craig will play the lead for at least one more chapter. This is an ongoing discussion with no word yet on an outcome. Perry, what do you think about the bidding war for James Bond, and where do you think that the property mm. will land? This is fascinating. I love these kinds of stories, mm. because this is not something that happens very often, mm. if ever, where this super hot property that is almost a guaranteed success every single time could wind up changing hands. And I imagine that would be a big deal for Sony if it loses it. That report also has a really interesting breakdown about how much that studio has to put in and how much they're getting back. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter how many times I've read that paragraph, it doesn't quite compute to me where it would be worth it more so than just, you know, being able to say we're the studio that distributes the Bond movies, which I guess is worth a lot. But I, I kind of want to see it go to Annapurna just because that would be the most interesting scenario to me. If it changes hands to another big studio, I, I mean, I imagine I'll treat it the same, I'll look at it the same exact way as I would had it had the Sony banner on it, but mm. that, if they score the distribution rights to this, that could be a major game changer to them. I mean, that, that's a teeny tiny company that yeah. has become well known for delivering low budget films, com especially compared to a Bond movie, and then they would get this? Mm -hmm. that, that could be interesting, and I want to see it happen. David. I think they do a good, Annapurna would be interesting because Annapurna did, they did Zero Dark Thirty, yeah. Yeah. I believe, yeah, with Catherine Bigelow. That was, that, was really, that was really good. So, but I think, I don't know, <clears throat> I've always liked 20th Century Fox. Um, I, I think, this sounds silly, this sounds like I'm shopping for shoes. You know, name brand recognition. I, I I love the the anthem. You know, I'm a big Alien fan. You know, I got Alien Covenant coming out soon, so I love their franchises uh, that 20th Century Fox puts out. I love what they did with Logan recently. Mm -hmm. You know, with their Marvel adaptations. So I think it would be in good hands at any of these studios. I mean, Universal's done a fantastic job with Fast and Furious franchise. You know, I mean, breaking the uh, international box office record. Warner Brothers, of course, uh, has a Harry Potter franchise. Does a good job. I mean, any of these places, it would have a good home. Mm -hmm. And a printer. I, I mean, I don't. I wonder what they get financing for that to put the money behind I mean do they have yeah. that kind of money maybe they do I don't know they'd make well they make a smaller budget version of Bond I remember remember when all those Sony emails were leaked and everything that the whole hack incident happened when they were doing the notes for Spectre those notes got leaked you know, basically the emails between the producers and the head of the studio yeah. they were saying the original estimates for that movie were 350 million dollars and the guy's like we get down to about 250. I mean, that's a lot of money. You know, Inspector, I mean, it's just huge, spectacular. That opening scene in Mexico City is just fantastic. It's gorgeous looking. So I, as much as I think it would be awesome to see it at Annapurna, I think I'd rather it be at one of the major studios just because of the financial backing. But again, I'm not an uh, economics guy here, so I don't know what Annapurna, but what their uh, financial records look like. Yeah, and speaking of what Perry was oh. talking about, the deal that Sony mm -hmm. had, I mean... It's like listen, a one... Listen, you know. they, they pay for 50% of the production costs, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. was uh, close to $250 million, Jeez. only received 25% of the profits, uh, and then they have to pay for the marketing costs. They also yeah. had to give MGN a slice of some non-bond stuff, like 22 Jump Street. Yeah. It's not that great of a deal, but everyone's going for it, because I think they think it's sure money even yeah. if it's not mm -hmm. a ton of money that they can get but they were saying that if Spectre had made how much Skyfall made which it did not they only would have earned maybe 38 million and I know that sounds like a lot to, to, to people but it, when you're talking about these franchises and how much money they're supposed to be making yeah. for, for a company that's that's a lot of risk a lot of work a lot of effort for very little payback so yeah, yeah and then also noted is Walt Disney is not in pursuit of this because they're busy with. I mean, they got Star Wars, they got Marvel, they got mm. they got so much on their plate, and their track record right now is really good, so they don't really need it. Yeah, Broke. it's an interesting a situation because I, I like the Annapurna idea. They, they don't release a lot of films. They average about three to four films a year, and even in two thousand two thousand fourteen, they only had one film that was Fox Catcher. So, yeah. like they, but they what they do really well is these very strong character studies. 
So, and it would be interesting to see what Bond would look like in their hands. And we've seen with Deadpool, you can make a small budget movie that makes a crap ton of money if you have the right script, the right character, and the right plot line, plot mm. throughout the whole film that get that gets keeps you interested and makes mm. you come back. You know, so it'd be fun to see what they could do. But I like 20th Century Fox, and, and, and it's probably going to stay with Sony. But if there's anywhere else you go, I like what David said about Fox. Fox has shown with Deadpool and Logan that they're willing to go to the R-rated place with these characters and willing to let them be R-rated mm -hmm. as they would and create the world where they can exist and be R-rated. And I think that's important for something like Bond, especially because now that we've laid this template that he's not these smooth-talking Lothario like he was with Roger Moore or Sean Connery, even be, and Pierce Brosnan as well, and Timothy Dalton to a lesser extent. Uh, but like what we have with Daniel Craig is a battering ram. Mm -hmm. And so when you have something like that, I think you have to find the right studio that understands how to create this franchise and create this character and, and uh, use him to the best of his abilities to bring out this new version of Bond that we have now. Uh, and so, the, and it's a better, I'm sure it's a better system, but nothing says they couldn't work together. Yeah. Right? Annapurna with Fox and kind of figure something out mm -hmm. there. Who knows? Right. You never, the smaller studios always can, they Kind of like go, Sony and Marvel yeah. with uh, Spider Man. Right. Yeah. They always have that thing where they could possibly do that. Mm -hmm. Annapurna had also worked with uh, Columbia on Sausage Party. Yeah. So that was their oh. first, you know, mm -hmm. big budget mm -hmm. movie. And, you know, I think on yeah. a previous movie talk, I thought that Sausage Party didn't do well. It did do very well. So yeah. I imagine they had a good experience on that and they want to they want to keep playing at that level yeah.